It's just us two now, huh? On a personal note, I must say you've surprised me, my far eastern friend. Ah, uh, oh! Despite being a Nipponese, you saw through the pretense to the malice that festered within that Englishman. And at the same time, you saw through the grime to the surprising heart of your English client. You have a curious talent for judging character, especially considering our very different cultures. Oh, is that a is that a compliment? Thank you. But a little bit racist as well. <laughs> I don't think there's anything curious about it. Whether we're from the Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan, we're all human beings, so we're not so very different on the inside. Oh, you know, I'm not a human being, but a vampire. <laughs> I took this case for one very simple reason. To lock swords with you once again here in the courtroom. Oh, you specifically wanted to defend, uh, to, to, um, to be the prosecutor for this case because you knew that I was the def defense lawyer? Really? You did? When I encountered you for the first time two months ago, it reminded me of toasting friendship and trust with another Nipponese, only to find my trust betrayed. Another Japanese? Through you, I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew and try to understand. Who else would he be talking about? You mentioned something similar earlier today, about total betrayal at the hands of the Japanese. Oh, that was... he was being literal? What happened exactly? Well, you may ask, and one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer, whether you like it or not. What does that even mean? Alright, then I'll wait for that today, if I must. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey and my retirement from service five years ago, it gives me cause to wonder if our meeting has some deeper purpose. Has this something to do with the other Japanese person you mentioned? Whoa, what the heck was that? I thought you were enjoying wine with me, having a toast. What? So farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow, until we meet again. It's done. It's over at last. But... Where's Iris disappeared to? Ah. Congratulations, Gina. I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Huh. Why is... Why is she being so mean? Well, you did what you said, Mr. Naraudo. You believed in me, right up to the end. Yes, odd is your name. Then why do you... What's with the grumpy face? What's odd about it? I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? No one ever has before, see? Kept the promise, I mean, properly. That's awful. I figured something out today. All my life, growing up in the slums, I never trusted no one. But that's just cause I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean, the more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. <sighs> Isn't that true? Yes, I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of it in that trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone and paid for it. 
that betrayal left a big scar. Really, you can't. I don't think you can compare that with this. I mean, Mr. McGill did was our client, and sure, we trusted him as a defense lawyer, yada yada yada. But we were complete strangers. He wasn't your friend. He wasn't my friend. I mean, yeah, I don't think that betrayal cut that deep. But it is, of course, much worse if the betrayal comes from a trusted person, a person you trust, or a person you look up to, or a pet, uh, yeah, a friend. You know, though, Gina, I worked something out quite recently, too. Trusting in someone else is really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. Ah, that's the same what Asugi said. And when your gut tells you it's the right thing to do and your trust is rewarded, there's no better feeling in the world. I think I have to thank you for reminding me of that valuable lesson. Oh, well, if you say so, uh, don't make me... Don't make a fat lot of sense to me, though. <laughs> I'm trying to say that putting my faith in you, Gina, has been a real pleasure. For crying out loud, pack it in! <laughs> but I suppose... I sort of feel the same way. Ah, oh, I mean, sometimes trusting someone else is, you know. All right. Thanks. This is the way I see it, Rinosuke. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Kazuma, am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer you believed I could be? Oh, who could that be? Um, pardon the interruption. Sholmes? No. Oh yes, Sholmes. Uh, but what the deuce does a man have to do to be noticed around here, my dear fellow? Uh, th that voice. It's too late for th that voice now, Mr. Naruhodo. I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. <laughs> yes, it was me all along, I would have said, when you finally you noticed me. But you people, with your incessant babbling. Uh, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> yes, it was me all along, you see? It's because your disguise is too good. Take it as a compliment. I assumed you'd been taken back to the hospital, to be honest. Indeed I was, but I managed to escape again. Escape? And what do you mean by again? <laughs> oh. I happen to be aware of one of two foibles of the doctor who was tending to me. I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily is issued me with a leave of absence. How very above board. But enough of my adventures. That was a fine victory, Mr. Naruto. Your tireless efforts justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations are in order. As a close friend, I tip my hat at you. Thank you. Huh. Some great detective you are. Great at being cold as ice, maybe. Have I irked you in some way, Miss Lestrade? Why well, you've been having a snooze in your nice soft bed. Some of us have been fighting for our lives. Ah, uh, well, that bullet did cause me to lose a substantial amount of blood, it's true. So I have indeed been feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but... Well, have a feel! Could you take your hands off my neck, please, Mr. Sholmes? And in some way, I suppose, congratulations are in order for you too, Miss Lestrade. What's that supposed to mean? Why it's so half-hearted? Well, naturally, it isn't my intention to alarm you, but... 
An acquittal in a trial with that particular prosecutor is perhaps a little precarious. Well done, Mr. Sholmes. Not alarming in the slightest. Oh, the Reaper, you mean? Because anyone who's found not guilty in a trial he was working on winds up dead anyway, is that it? The very point I was trying to make, and exemplified by the fate of... as exemplified by the fate of Mr. McGilded, in fact. But that was because of... Eh, of Mr. Graydon. Uh, but of course, I pay no attention to such irrational drivel myself. Why bring it up then? Yeah, well, it don't bother me. Oh, really? Cause not. The way I see it, the Reaper's a bit like... Him upstairs. Him upstairs? You mean, like, God? Yeah, I'm upstairs. Him upstairs knows what's what, right? He knows what people are like on the inside. You won't have to guard the wrong end of the stick. There are some coves like that bog trotter what are rotten to the core. At the end of the day, I'm... <laughs> him upstairs make sure they got what they deserve. But, but it's about your life, what? I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper taking matters into his own hands and claiming lives is another. Well, I ain't like the McGilded of this world, so I ain't scared. I got principles, see? You do? You are a pickpocket, after all. A trade in which... A, a trade in you which is to be admired, Miss Lestrade. Oi, just give it a rest, all right? As I was saying, congratulations are in order. The news of your acquittal was a very welcome news to me indeed. Let me express my heartfelt congr congratulations, Gina. First name basis. Well, uh, um... There you are, honey. How long have you been here? Honestly, I went to the main entrance, especially to meet you there. Uh, Iris, my dear, I do apologize. But wait until I tell you what happened. This pair made utter fools of themselves. What happened? As you know, I have a pension for disguise. I was hiding in this room dressed as a bailiff. But they still didn't notice my presence at all. <laughs> they had no idea. Can you imagine, Iris? Would you credit it? I'm not sure, really. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, Holly, but you just don't have the weighty presence you seem to think you have. Ouch. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's going to land you in trouble one day. Uh, I'll be careful. Ouch. Anyway, it's such a shame. I was so hoping to throw a party for Jenny tonight. But you won't be able to come, will you? Don't look like I'm gonna be going nowhere for a while. You heard the judge's patter. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently. All them offenses. What was it again? Breaking and entering. Taking the bog trotter stuff. What was in lug? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I think you'll find that basically being a pickpocket is the main offense. But diving ain't an offense. It's a job, in it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. Still, it has got me thinking about this. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. I mean, you didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, Otto? Well, no, but I was never a pickpocket. Well, anyway, I reckon I could make a change. She just ignored me. <laughs> I'm gonna do something for all of them. Lord like me, from the slums, something that makes a difference for him. That's a wonderful idea, Ginny, and I'm sure you can do it! <laughs> what is it? Oh, Nothing. Uh, who's that? Miss Gina Lestrade? Oh, the prison carriage has arrived, ma'am. Come with me to the rail gate at once. The prison carriage? Right. Well, looks like I'm off then. Yes. Goodbye, Gina, and good luck. 
Uh, um, Let me guess, you need a lawyer? Yes. Uh, what, what are you doing? Uh, ah, wh what was that for? I, um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, uh, ah, indeed. Perhaps the situation calls for a phrase hitherto missing from your vocabulary, Miss Lestrade. Eh? On occasions such as this. I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh. Oh yes, it's good advice, Ginny. Right, I see. Well... Wow! <laughs> that takes a lot... long time. The... The... Thanks, Otto. Oh. Oh. Thank you for everything, what you've done, for believing in me. She's smiling. She's laughing. Not at all. In fact, that should be my line. Thank you, Gina. It was a pleasure. Well, there she goes. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. Well, well, quite the indomitable pig purse. Oh, I nearly forgot. I bought a paper outside. It's a special edition and this trial is all over the front page. Pickpocket's innocence proven. Isn't it wonderful? You should have shown it to Gina, Iris. She would have been thrilled. Oh, oh no, how silly of me. Ah, uh, but anyway, uh, would you like the good news or the bad news? Uh, not again. Mm, well, what do you say, Runa? Holly? As usual, I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Yeah, I think so too. Absolutely not. I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. And there you have it. How people answer that question says a lot about them, doesn't it? Let's not go there. Alright then, maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. It was a record level of rainfall, apparently. Okay, that's the new good news? Well, that is good news indeed. We can journey back in greater comfort. Alright then, what's the bad news? The huge storm has left the seas very choppy. The channel is in particular is awful. So sailings out of Dover had been delayed by a day or more. Wait, Dover? That's right, if we head to the station immediately. We may still make it in time to wave Susie off. But, but... There won't be a train, surely. We couldn't be that lucky. Who do you think I am, Mr. Naruhodo? Mr. Sholmes? I rushed to Victoria Station earlier and made arrangements for a special express. If we hurry now, we shall be there in time for dinner. And I know a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked soul. I don't... The Grey Detective does it again. Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of rail transport director's foibles. Okay, are you blackmailing them or anything? I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily laid on a locomotive. Elementary. Uh, just an idea, but it might be wise to stop manipulating people that way. What are we waiting for then? To London, Victoria. Oh, I didn't think we would see Sasato-san again, but here we are. That took somewhat longer than I had anticipated. So this boat must be about to leave now. Mr. Sato, where are you? Huh? 
Over there, look. It looks like she's reading something, but she's not on a boat. What's she doing? Ah! It. What? Mr. Sato, wait. What are you doing? Mr. Mr. Naruhodo, what are you doing here? We came as soon as we could after the trial. I mean, we heard that sailings were being delayed due to the bad weather, you see? Oh, I... I see. Then... then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? It... it went well. She was acquitted. Oh, thanks to you, sasato -san. That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. The book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your Encyclopedia of British Law, wasn't it? Oh dear, I was hoping you hadn't seen that. Why would you do something like that, what? I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. What? Why? Why do you say that? You said something earlier about being the most miserable or the worst judicial assistant, but that's not true. So, I was saying my final farewell. You were saying goodbye to law? You, sasato san Would I be correct in assuming? It's because of the people, Mr. Sato. I deliberately altered the scene of a crime and then I tried to hide the fact. Why did you try to hide the fact? I mean, it was an emergency. You needed to look inside the storeroom to see if someone's injured. I don't think it's wrong. The door was locked. What I did is utterly unforgivable. It's not. What? That reminds me. How did you even come to have this, Susie? Did you steal it? On the evening of the incident, Mr. Sholmes had invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh yes, we had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave us a little introductory lesson, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, I mean. Oh, that was so much fun! I saw Runo's armband! Yes, please don't do that again, Iris. That band's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should, put, you should pay more attention to it. You didn't notice for ages. On a whim, I thought it would be fun to see if I could take the cat flapper mat, so I put it up my sleeve. Really? And then I rather forgot about it until I found myself in Mr. Windybank's shop with it. I... I see. And then... Ah! Mr. Jones! Mr. Jones! Leave me, Mr. Naruhodo. Right. After Mr. Naruhodo had left the shop, I started to think. The door started to play on my mind. The storeroom door, you mean? Yes, if Gina was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could be only be behind that door. And at that moment, the little device that I had up my sleeve sprang to mind. I was so worried about Gina, I simply had to know. So, you used the cat flapper mat to make the peephole in the door? I kept it in a photographic print of the shop. By one of Hurley's red-handed recorders. Indeed, it was the first importance, that point. It was our first importance. Precisely when the peephole was made, that information would prove to be Mr. Narodo's greatest weapon. Though naturally without proof, it would have amounted to nothing. But when I, when I looked through the hole in the door... The sight that, had, that met my eyes made my blood run cold. Thoughts started to run through my mind. I remember that trial two months earlier. The trial of Magnus McGilded. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to secure his freedom. I made the British justice system feel very dark and sinister. Oh, it made 
the justice system feel very dark and sinister to me. And then a terrible thought occurred to me. What if... What if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked exactly as though Gina had shot Mr. Windybank. Even though I was sure she would never have done such a thing. You were worried that the true culprit would try to frame her for the crime? That's right, but then I realized... It would be very difficult for anyone to give tough false testimony in this case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened behind the door of a locked room. For someone to claim falsely to have witnessed it, there would have be, there would have to be a way to see beyond the door. Ah. For which, a people would be the very thing. Only the people I had made wasn't actually there until after the crime had been committed, of course. And then the criminal would know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. But a possibility of a rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? Uh, a trap? Is that why she did it? So, is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that you made a peephole to anyone, not even to the police. I know, and I knew at the time what I was doing was wrong, a criminal offense even. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Shawns. If Mr. Naruhuro was completely backed into a corner with no other possible means of escape, the truth about the people could save him. That was my plan. She really does think of everything. But, but then, uh, why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight. If she had done that, it would have rendered you complicit in a whole escapade. Ah. You could have been disbarred if you had been seen to have knowingly tampered with the crime scene. So Mr. Sato decided to shoulder the burden of responsibility alone. For your sake and Mrs. Strauss. Mr. Sato... Uh, the truth is, when it happened, I did it because... I'd lost a little of my faith in the law. Oh. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convicted of the crime. But the moment I allowed myself to think that... is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. That's why... Oh, Sato... What you did... isn't comparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied in the witness stand, using that peephole as a way to complicate, implicate Gina. And besides, if the, people in, if the peephole inconsistency hadn't existed, I'm not at all sure that she would have been acquitted in the end. Mr. Sato, what you did, saved Gina's life! Yeah, okay, in retrospect... Well, with your kind words, Mr. Narodo, you saved me too from my regrets. Well, we must all be thankful that Miss Lestrade's freedom has been assured. Yes, exactly. Although some of the loose ends in that trial will continue to play on my mind, I'm sure. But a revelation that a music box contained... secret messages, Mr. Narodo? What a triumph to work that out! I'm full of admiration! Well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Oh, it wasn't? There was a communications officer among the jury members you see, a telegraph operator. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the disc were just meaningless tones. As one would expect, after all, we are talking about secret government communications. No doubt they were written in cipher to avoid being readily understood, should they have been intercepted. In cipher? I... I see. So then, we could never have hoped to understand the message anyway. Nonsense, my dear fellow. It's quite a zero-pipe problem, I assure you. A what? A zero-pipe problem? What is that? 
えー、そうき、あそき、わっわっ Well, that can't be a real word, can it? How funny! Wait, Iris, what did you say? Oh, um, I just said Asogi. Does, does that word mean something to you? Mean something? Where did you pick that up? Asogi was the name of my best friend! What? But how? How do you know that name, Iris? I wrote it down during the trial before when the message was playing on the music box. She transcribed it on the fly? She really is a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out in plain Morse code, so I tried various ways to interpret it. Oh, so what she meant, it wasn't Morse code because Asugi didn't make any sense to her. But it does to us. But whatever I tried, the words just didn't seem to make any sense. That is, in English at least. Oh. It suddenly occurred to me, you see, and there's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world have altered and added to Morse code to use it in their own languages. I, I don't believe it. Are you saying? That's right. I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before. But I think it's based on the Iroha pangram, isn't it? And you mean to say that in Japanese Morse code, the message says Asugi? Ah, okay, so it is a different Morse code. Yes, I think so. Sorry, but I don't remember all of the Japanese Morse code. Iris, would you let me see that? Mrs. Sato, do you know it? Do you know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Because I'm quite sure Morse code will become ever and more important for international communications. Then might I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version. <laughs> what? Be it that as it may, I will show me the message, please. Of course. But, but what can this possibly mean? Whatever is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless dots and dashes, it's made the color drain from Susato-san's face. There's no doubt that this message is written in Japanese Morse code. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for its secret communications? I d don't understand the reason why, but the message appears to be a list of four people's names. Four names? The first is... K. Asugi. Kazuma? Asugi. Why? Why was his name on that disc? The second is A. Shin. Shin? I don't recognize that name. The third is T. Guregu-son. Guregu... Gregson? Ah, it would seem Tobias Gregson is the third man on the list. And what's his name doing in the secret government communications as well? And the last name? What's the matter, Mr. Sato? It's... It's just so strange, so unexpected. Oh, what is it, Susie? Don't keep us in suspense. The last name is J. Wilson. John Wilson? What? Wilson? John H. Wilson? You mean Daddy? Holy crap, out of the four names, two people are already dead. It says only J. Wilson, so I'm afraid I can't be sure. Then, after the four names, it reads, if I translate from Japanese, that is all four. And that's the end of the message, or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. I just can't believe it. Who would ever have thought that those discs contained Japanese Morse code? <laughs> well, no, I mean, 
or rather, who would have known that those discs contained like four names? Those four names, out of which two people are already dead. It would appear that this particular message is a communication of some sort between Great Britain and the Empire of Japan. So, that it could be in Japan then? Uh, where Susie and Bruno come from? Oh, well... Uh-oh, we need to tell her the truth. No, it's not very likely really, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson and there must be lots of Jays among them. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. But we can't tell Iris about that now, we just can't. What? Why? This is so strange. Somehow in solving the case of Mr. Windy Bank's murder today, I feel like I've rolled back a boulder at the mouth of a very dark cave. I do wonder if perhaps it's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. Well, that's ominous. Oh dear, the ship is going to set sail soon. Yes, it seems so. I'll sail on that steamship first, to the port of Dunkirk in France. Then I'll change into a larger passenger vessel bound for Japan. You're really going then, Susie? We wish you a safe passage, Mr. Sato. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. Mr. Sato, I... I had hoped you... I had hoped to have you always at my side. To guide me and support me. Mr. Naruto, please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. I'm... I'm quite sure I'll be back before you know it. Really, Susie? Oh no, don't forget, Iris. I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise? About your manuscript. Ah. Oh. oh yes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. A promise is a promise. Definitely, Iris. Mr. Naruto? Yes? Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, of course. On the SS Buria, when I was dragged out from that wardrobe, Sir Harvest. What? No! We didn't meet there for the first time! What are you talking about? If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with a Susato takedown. <laughs> well, that made an impression, alright. You know very well that, what I, that I'm talking about after that. After? Not before? What? It's strange, but being thrown together as we were in that case, I somehow felt straight away that you were the perfect person to continue Kazuma-sama's great legacy. Mr. Sato. And my instincts were right. I really want to believe. No, I'm sure that... I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. Somehow we seem to have come to the end of the adventures of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Or the first volume, at least. Looking back now, it feels as though fate has led me on this journey. Fate led me to becoming a lawyer, to traveling halfway around the world, to meeting the great detective. I'm sure there'll be trials and tribulations ahead. Of course there will. 
But whatever happens, I know I'll be able to turn my fortunes around. <laughs> he brought his violin? After all, I have the greatest friends in the world on my side. How very fitting, sailing into the rising sun. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Naruhodo. Mm, yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have some rather awkward news. The railway company has decided to sue over the special express train, apparently. Uh, what? Huh? It caused such a commotion on the line, all the other trains had to wait at stations. But really, we would never have made it to Dover in time otherwise. Anyway, I explained everything and how it was all your fault. <laughs> huh? Uh, eh? Uh? I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Mr. Sato... You love defending yourself in court? Huh? 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 It's alright, I'm perfectly happy to testify. Against me? He really didn't look like the sort of man who'd do something so outrageous, see? Uh, Mr. Sholmes? Yes? A word, if you don't mind. Oh, why, certainly, any word you like. Bellow it out, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. I love Runo's words, and I know just the one he'll use here. Then, I really must say... Objection! Objection! And that's the credits! Wow! In the following weeks, hundreds of music boxes arrived at Baker Street from all over Europe. Something was afoot, though it had transpired I had ordered them all myself. So I advertised them for sale with, used by Mr. Sholmes to solve an important case. And the money I've earned, consulting detective work, pays a pittance by comparison. <sighs> ah, I haven't slept a wink. This manuscript is due tomorrow now. And when I'm this busy, Hallie usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement for some dry toast and insipid coffee. I do miss Susie and her lovely Japanese breakfasts. What did she make? Like, onigiri? Rice balls? A witness, your testimony is riddled with contradictions. Well, I don't know that note. His father is an innocent man, or are you calling my son a liar? Witnesses, my courtroom is no place for your petty arguments. Having delivered a Russian dance at a shore in Shanghai, I laid low on the steamship for a while, but last night I apprehended an extremely suspicious Japanese national on board. I've done nothing wrong! All I did was give Maga his offspring refuge in my pocket! A man brings up kittens on board and suddenly he's a hardened criminal! It's not fair! I forgot his voice. <laughs> Scientific investigation will be the gold standard for policing in the new age. I dream of a world governed by the tenets of order and discipline. Like a great clock, in fact, whose hundreds of parts mesh together in perfect unison. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have but 2 minutes and 37 seconds until my next appointment. Uh, 
but the latest Rans magazine is out and I'm in it again. And whenever I say that one line she wrote now, I get a standing ovation. Wanna hear it? Huh, not bad, I suppose, for an amateur. <laughs> Look, 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 look. Ah. Her leadership puts me to shame. I hope you don't die, Gregson. I like your car. I, I like you. Even though you did make things difficult in the last trial. Have you visited the old guard on a daily basis, of course? Joanie, Joanie. I must say, bathing with those barley stairs every day has done wonders for the dicky pack. They're managing rather well with the housework, too. Got his maze business taped out, I'd say. Hope the gossiping neighbors won't realize the man of the house is his own maid. You're your own maid. And you run a maid business? So you are the maid of other households? Oh, I don't get it. My role is back on the beat again, all thanks to the Reaper. But there's nothing I enjoy more these days than hunting out a small change in the gutter. Uh, I am a better Bobby now, looking forward for Londoners to have dropped half half penny than my lovely wife. Oh, but... Oh, Rolly... Looks like I'm gonna be doing the time for a bit now. But Iris comes every day for a natter, so it ain't too boring. She's always going on about all them cases what Chomes is looking into. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting when you get into them. Yeah, maybe you can be Chomes' assistant or something. Yes, I renounced my upbringing and chose a life of sophisticated crime. But regrets? Please. I am over, bro, but that ain't the ass we used to know. And we got Ivan here playing the humpback of Milton and Skulkin's milk run. The three muskevotsits. Milking the neighborhood for all it's worth. Okay. It's a legitimate business after all. So we should be glad. I, I think. This past six months has been a time I shall remember forevermore. Painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I've come to realize that's what life is all about. Nadohodo san, I promise. Your assistant will return to you one day. But for now, I leave you with many memories and a heartfelt wish that life will treat you well. Oh my goodness, Sato-san. Oh, that's so cute. Walking with Asuki once again. Ah, what can I say about this game? Oh, it was so good. Like, I loved the fa like I loved all the cases. Um, wait, did I really love all the cases? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they were very, very inventive. 
the, the, the first case in England was especially crazy. Like the way that the evidence has changed mid-trial. And I think it's the first time that we defended like someone who's actually guilty. That was a very nice twist on things. Mm, the last case, of course, really, really chilling. It nicely ties up the, the story together. So there are still some open points, namely in our first case, this phantom lady. We still don't know who she is. Probably some kind of government agent slash spy from Great Britain or something like that. Oh no, we're walking alone. No. And yeah, I like the mechanics, like the jury mechanic was really nice. And the fact that you had multiple, multiple witnesses on the stand who react to each other. The great deduction, I don't know about that one. It just, it, that felt very handholdy. It was fun, sure, but I mean, it was very clear what to click on and what exactly you had to do. You didn't need to think like you had in the cases. The music was great, like it left a real impact on me. It's, it's a very nice mix of like Japanese melodies and western melodies. Yeah, I like this sort of thing. Yeah, and I also found out that Soseki Natsume, Natsume Soseki is actually a real person, like a real historical person, a study, uh, a student of English literature actually, and he wrote many very popular Japanese books apparently, um, one of which is My Cat Wagahai. It has a fun mix of like real historical figures and fictional historical figures like Sholmes and uh, Wilson and yeah, that's quite nice. But we're not at the end yet. There's still a second game to play, namely the sequel to this game, which will pick up all the mysteries left in this game and where we ended, I think, to continue the stories. And of course I hope to see Sato san again. And of course I hope to see you all again, so see you hopefully soon. Bye.